All right. So um, <clears throat> I um, want to share this with you. As a believer in Christ, what do you have to do? What do you need to do as a believer in Jesus Christ? And this is my answer to you. Heresy for the day, nothing. You have to do nothing. Nothing. Don't do anything. Nope, don't do anything. Chapter and verse, brother, because uh, you're really going off on the deep end now. <laughs> Let's go back real quick to the Old Testament. There was a man named Uzzah. Uh, when they were moving the ark from one location to another during King David's reign. And I believe they just got the ark back. And only if you were a uh, part of the Levitical priesthood could you touch the ark and take care of it. This guy, Uzzah, okay, well, before, so when they're going across this uh, a threshing floor where oxen would thresh out wheat, uh, the oxen slipped, um, I believe, when they were carrying the ark. And, uh, and then this man named Uzzah reached out and touched the ark, and immediately God struck him dead. The guy's name means self-strength. Whenever you, there are so many believers, and non-believers, but believers, who hear word uh, teaching from the pulpit, and that teaching is putting law on them. And then they try to reach out and touch the things of God, and they die. And they're touching the things of God, that they think are the things of God, or maybe they are, but they're doing it in their strength, and they're tired, and they're worn out, and they give up, and they're frustrated because there's so much law put on them. And in Hebrews 4, so chapter and verse, Hebrews chapter 4, I'm going to base what I'm talking about on Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about um, that the word did not profit them uh, in the past, in the Old Testament, because it was not mixed with faith. The word mixed is when you eat something, your your saliva uh, helps you chew and consume the food. What's that describing, in my opinion, is a metabolism of what you're digesting and diffusion where you are consuming what you're eating, and truly what you're eating is becoming who you are because you are what you eat, right? In a nutshell, the word became flesh, and by revelation, moment by moment and experience and revelation by revelation from faith to faith and glory to glory, our faith, our, our flesh is becoming word in him. Maybe that's another video. Okay. And so there is a diffusion of the word when it is mixed with faith. Okay. So if I'm not hearing faith and I'm hearing something else, then it's going to create strife in my walk. And I'm not going to have rest, which is what Hebrews 4 talks about. When I feel like I have to do something in the sense of um, merit-based or even if I'm a, it's how do I say this? If I'm doing it in my strength, I'm going to die. I'm going to have strife. There's going to be doubt and confusion in the sense that um, I'm not sure about the purpose, right? If you read and listen to Hebrews and read it, I was listening to it over and over and over. He talks about um, hearing his voice, the voice of the Lord. And then uh, uh, he says, uh, the writer says that David even talks about that the, the certain day was set aside, a certain day. There's always this day. And, it, and today is the day. And what does that mean? Today, the day when you hear his voice is the day. It is the day when that faith is mixed in you and it becomes word, and then <clears throat> it creates the rest. There is going to be no rest for you and the Lord if, we, if, you, if you don't hear the word. And you're not going to hear the word if it's some, I keep saying it, an anecdotal curriculum type word that's putting this expectation on you to try to be something or do something. And if you don't do it, then there's this consequence. That word is going to hurt you. It already has. And that the word that's mixed with faith, it says that, that, but then he goes on, he goes, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any dog. So what he's saying is, is that when this word goes in you, it will transform you. It will expose things. And it's not doing it in a way that's shaming you. It's doing it in a way that's transforming you and imparting life. So um, 
But if you just read that and listen or hear it or whatever, it says, hear his voice, hear his voice, hear, if you hear it, harden not your heart. And he was, this was uh, the writer talking to Messianic Jews, Jews who kept the law, who believed in Jesus. And, and <clears throat> of course they would struggle. I mean, look at Peter. I mean, he, it says that he literally stood condemned when Paul opposed him to his faith in uh, Galatians chapter 2. And why is that? Well, because Peter was uh, walked with the Lord during really when it was time the, when it was still under the old covenant, and he he saw Jesus fulfilling the law and and the transition that the testator of the new covenant had not died yet for him to Paul know, knew the post Christ the risen Christ the the post uh, Old Testament right the, the resurrected Christ and Peter knew Christ in the flesh you know. And um, through the transition and all that. And so there was a different uh, perspective. And later on, of course, Paul talks to Peter. And Peter talks about that in his uh, second letter. Point being is that, um, <clears throat> is that you, when you hear his voice, again, it keeps saying that over and over. When you hear, harden not your heart. And the reason that they're hard, it sounds like they're hardening their hearts, is because of that, that law that they're wanting to keep and that they're hearing and that they're mixing with um with with the doctrine and in romans 6 it says now that you have believed that form of doctrine uh in your heart <clears throat> the heart is, is where it starts <clears throat> so i gotta i gotta do this and believe all you <clears throat> this is all you have to do nothing be a tree be a tree and but and and be, and believe the word but believe the word that is sound doctrine that that is based on a primer on, on a purpose and primer uh, that has that's alive, that's spirit filled, um, that you know that has that type of those type of attributes. So um, that pretty much sums it up. Um, somebody needs to hear this that you don't have to do anything. When you go and you're and you're in the, and you're like, well, man, should I do? I need to, I have to do that. All of a sudden, you're putting yourself under something, right? The Lord is going to put it in you by this faith that's in you. When you hear his voice, he keeps saying, you're here. it's the beginning of faith. And you enter that rest. And when you enter rest, you're entering the purpose that you have been purposed on this planet for and this creation for. And when you enter that purpose, you're, you can only do it by faith. You can only do it by the revelation of Christ in you. And when you do that, and you are in your purpose there's rest. There's no other way. And, and so if you're not doing anything in the sense, what I'm saying is you don't quit trying, right? And don't even try to quit trying. Just be. Be who you are in Him. And I can tell you this too. I'm blue in the face and all this stuff. And maybe some of you are understanding what I'm saying. Um, and it, but you don't have to try to be who you are in Christ. You already are who you are in Christ. And there's a growing, as I said in the in the audio of the SoundCloud yesterday, there is a growing in the grace and revelation of, 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 of Christ. And and you don't learn this. And that and that's what I said in that audio, and it sounds crazy, but it makes sense if you listen to that audio. You don't learn this. Paul says, neither a blood, a flesh and blood reveal this to me, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. He's not just talking about the good news. It is the good news. He's talking about all of it. The just shall live by faith. When he speaks his word, harden not your heart to his voice. He speaks his, his, his voice. The voice is the rhema, the quickened word coming from his mouth that enters your ears and then your heart. And then something happens. Something happens. And it's continual over and over. Salvation is not, oh man, am I going to hell? It's, if that's all it is, I mean, golly, no wonder we're so tired and miserable. I'm being honest. We are. I was. And so I started really digging in the word and, and, and just understanding what God is really saying. It's like getting saved over and over and over. And that's what it says from faith to faith and glory to glory. The inward man is being renewed daily, daily daily and this can't happen if i keep trying and doing and just be who you are in him and and you don't have to do anything paul says in, in acts he says uh god is about to do a work in, in, in so much that if somebody had told you you wouldn't even believe me he says that in acts he's quoting one of the prophets 
So there is a rest and I've talked about this in another video, but I'm saying it in a different way. And, the, and, and it's this, you don't have to do anything in it to, to prove to God, anything, hear his voice, hear good word, word that motivates godliness in you, uh, good things. Doesn't mean things are going to be perfect. Doesn't mean things that, that all hell won't break loose. I mean, with this, you can stand the test of, of trials and tribulations and all that stuff and, and, and not, um, utterly fall, you know, all this stuff. You, you can get stronger even. So hope this blesses you. Send me your comments, likes, whatever you want. Subscribe. Thanks. Bye.